Hi everybody, Joel from Sydney, Australia, here with his K5 Stealth Bomber. Little run through of the bike. Couple little tidy ups, I didn't import this bike, I've bought this bike here, not far from my house, only with 70 kilometres. You'll see in the video some tidying up of the wiring, some relocating, created a little wiring harness, and then done a little induction air filter setup. Bike was uh, overheating a little bit, just because I like to ride real hard and fast. So I made a little air filter thing for it. So here it is, it's the 12,000 2.5T motor 21 inch motorbike tires front and rear just got the derailleur there but it's not hooked up i'm gonna piss that off soon and just get a nice guide for it single speed kke shocks front and back this is the 72 volt 45 amp hour battery 3.2 kilowatt you can see here, it's got the Tektro half twist throttle, all integrated lights. Obviously the controller's not there. You can see what I've done just quickly. There's the air filter. So a couple of little things that I've done and I'm about to do, you'll see in the video. Uh, just a couple of, some cheap pedals there. The old ones they get with it are shit. Put the light up here, made myself a little bracket, mounted it up off the seat. I think it's much nicer off there. Just the positioning of it. At first it was down in there and it was just hitting my legs as I was riding. No good, nice and tight on the wiring up through there. These holes are now gonna be actual useful. As you'll see on the test ride with the next video, it doesn't cut out as much and the air filter setup works nice and good. There it is there, nice little phone holder. There's the key. Charging points underneath there. Just twist it in, as you can see. We've done a little cutout of the controller. Box, you're not obviously using the controller box because this is the 7250 amp sine wave controller, which is obviously too big to fit in there. You don't really want the thing hanging out the front anyway, getting all dirty and wet, so it's all nice and tucked in there. You'll see in the video ahead, all the wiring and the placement of the controller. Nice and secure. It does not make one sound. This bike, and I'll tell you, is absolutely silent. Not one noise. And easily 100 kilometres an hour. Easily. It does 75 kilometres an hour in about three seconds. Very fast bike. Yeah, that works very good underneath there. Just puts air into there. A couple of little holes drilled in there that go straight up into the battery box and then exit out the back. So yeah, very good little modification. And now I'll show you the uh, inside there and all the wiring. Nice little tidy up that I've done. My little tidy up on the wiring controller and my new little cooling method. A couple of little portholes there. Cut the front panel where the controller would usually sit or can't sit because it's too small. Got the blower here. As you can see in there, a little bit of a string. Let's see if we can get some airflow. Put it on three. generating a whole bunch of airflow between the controller and the battery. We'll then cool down the wiring, vent out these holes that were already there. And you can see just cruising along, got a little bit of movement just on the thing. battery and the controller down. 
phase two, we're gonna put a little filter media in between the frame and the old controller panel just to stop a bit of moisture getting in there. And we'll check some more flow. We'll go around the other side, check the wiring. A little bit of a tidy up here on the wiring harness. Just to make it a bit like a loom, all taped up, cable tied nice and tight. This little bit just sits in there like that. Everything's nice and tight, all hidden away. Plenty of room, plenty of clearance now for the new air induction system. Hopefully keep it a lot cooler. Everything operate on smooth and no overheating problems. Tidy of wiring, easy to work on. Thanks for coming. Here we have it, people. Part two of the air induction. A couple of nice holes cut down there. Check it out. Get a little bit of filter membrane. Put it in behind there. Good much for a better result. Plenty of air intake, no moisture, no bugs. Straight through there. Up in there, cool down the battery, cool down the controller, the usual. That's it, everybody. Nice little tidy up on the wiring. Some new foam on the battery. Make sure if anyone's got one of these or thinking about getting them, you keep an eye on water inside that case. Mine wasn't, wasn't even that old and had a little bit of rust in there. Repainted it, tidied it up. Put some new foam on the battery, obviously, so it doesn't move. Tidied up the wiring harness. Obviously, just keep an eye on that. Make sure it's not rusting up. And I've put some tape around the battery, top and bottom, obviously, so it doesn't uh, get water into the actual battery itself and start rusting and stuff like that. So hopefully that's a lot better. The wiring, just a little bit tidy up around the front there. I like me wiring nice and tidy. You don't want wires hanging out everywhere, getting dirty. Obviously put tape around all the connectors. So every couple of months, just take it off, clean it up. Make sure there's no dirt or water in there, rusting out, keep an eye on things. So yeah, that's pretty much it. For now, I've got to look at doing a couple little more modifications as we go along. Put a big seat on there, gonna get an even better seat. See if they give you a rubbish. So yeah, all in all, uh, if you're thinking about buying one, make sure you go ahead and do. <laughs> um, yeah, couldn't be happier with the bike. It's, uh, it's an amazing little thing. Everywhere you go, people spin out. The range is unbelievable. Uh, yeah, couldn't be happier. So there's obviously a lot of things that when you get them as a standard bike, you'd want to change and customize to your own specifications, I think. The next things I'll be looking at for me is obviously just a little single speed guide down there, get rid of the derailleur, maybe upgrading the shocks even. But the shocks are fine, it rides good. If you ride it flat out, yeah, it's going to overheat a little bit. Um, but if you're not riding that hard, won't overheat at all. I've done a 80 kilometre ride on it already, giving it heaps and not an issue. Couple little times I had to stop because of the overheating, and you just take off and cruise again. That's why I did the air filter just to ride a bit harder and faster so it doesn't stop on me. So far, it's worked good. Next video, you'll see the test ride video. See if there's anything I'd be thinking about changing in the future will be, like I say, the guides, some four piston brakes, make it stop a little bit better. Um, the shocks. Maybe some handlebars get a little bit higher. I'm a tall guy, so I want it nice and high. But besides that, to be honest with you, it's not like a downhill mountain bike where you're chasing specs and chasing, you know, products, trying to get every little best of everything on there. These things, you, you know, if you're not doing major downhill stuff with it, which you don't really want to do because of the style of frame that it is, you know, medium to light off-roading and, nice and fast on the road. What they've got, they're just unbelievable. So stable. Yeah, couldn't be happier. So that's it, everybody. That's the uh, 
12,000 watt, 72 volt, 150 amp, K5 Stealth Bomber. Put some comments below if you want to know anything. Thanks for watching.